Good evening, and welcome back to 31 Horror Nights. It's October 4th, and tonight's movie is The Vanishing. This rarely has much impact on what score I'll eventually give the movie, but this one has the highest rating of all 31 movies on IMDb. This is a 1988 thriller from the Netherlands directed by George Slyzer. And the plot on paper seems very simple. This man is searching for his wife after she disappeared at a rest stop. And apparently he starts getting letters from the abductor, I guess. One thing that definitely caught my attention on the trailer is that it starts out with my name is someone, someone, I'm pretty sure he was the main character. I am a sociopath and a claustrophobe. Maybe sociopath is like a mistranslation. Sociopath has a very, very like negative connotation. Or maybe it's not a mistranslation at all. Maybe this movie is just bad versus evil. Much like The Grudge, the original director remade this movie in English and the remake was not received very well. I'm pretty sure this came up when I was looking for movies for the classics Horror Nights. And this certainly won't be the last movie of that type for this month. I'm gonna go check it out. I would say that The Vanishing is definitely the best movie of the month so far. I'm still gonna give it an 8 out of 10. I was considering giving it a 9, but when I read the plot synopsis, I realized that I made an assumption that made me believe the ending was actually better than it was. It's still good though. Speaking of assumptions, the um, I was right in the fact that um, that was the character talking about being a sociopath, but that wasn't the guy with the missing wife. That was the person who abducted her. Though arguably he is the main character of the movie alongside Rex, the man whose wife was abducted. But the guy who did it, Raymond, his character is I think the most compelling thing about The Vanishing. He does not fit the stereotypical archetype of a murderer, like even in real life, but especially not in a movie. He is the most average Joe Schmo looking guy you've ever seen. He also has a loving wife and two daughters, and he seems very happy to be a family man. Like, the trailer made me believe that this wasn't going to be a mystery of discovering how this woman disappeared or who did it. It seemed very clear that we're supposed to know who did it right from the beginning. That's not the point. The only thing that's ever up in the air is what eventually happened to Saskia, the woman who was abducted. The movie jumps to three years after the kidnapping, and that not knowing is what's really getting to Rex. He seems to have found, like, a new girlfriend. It was kind of weird. Um, He referred to Saskia as his wife, and then later just as his friend. I don't really know what that was. But anyway, it, it doesn't seem to be, like, it's just the shock of her getting kidnapped. I think he just wants to know what happened. It's not stated to even really be like a slim possibility that she's not dead, but it's not like impossible. I think a lot of the biggest strengths in this movie comes from Raymond's character and the guy who played him did a very good job with acting, but I think mostly it was the writing that made this so interesting. He's one of those characters like Anton from No Country for Old Men where you can't figure out what he's thinking. By all accounts, this man had no criminal record whatsoever before this. He just seemed like a normal guy. He even seemed to be like nice and well-respected. But you see how much effort he puts into this abduction. He acts out every single part of it. He tries to wrap up every single loose end. And it's also kind of a psychological study of Rex as well, just to see how far he wants to go to get the answers he's looking for. This movie had quite the chilling ending, but it wasn't as good as, again, that assumption made me think it was. Still, it's a very fitting ending for this movie. I think that The Vanishing has earned the reputation that it's gotten over the years. I can certainly think of better thrillers about abductions of a loved one. Searching comes to mind, but I'm not going to say that this didn't earn its notoriety. And now let's talk about the, well, one spoiler of this movie. We as the audience and Rex to know that in all likelihood Saskia is dead, but it's not impossible that she's alive. The odds are low, but they're not zero. Raymond absolutely knows this and uses this to his advantage to get Rex to do what he wants. Rex says that he doesn't even care about justice being served anymore, which like is kind of weird because I would. And I think that most other people would too, but 
He says that he doesn't care, and Raymond says that he believes Rex when he says that. We certainly do know a lot about what happened before the actual, like, moment where she gets captured, but we never actually see it happen. And the plan that we saw Raymond acting out so many times isn't even what happens. He tries to do that, but he hesitates, and then he sneezes, and then he just, I guess, gives up. He didn't want to do all this because he wanted to. I think he just wanted to know if he could. It is sheer dumb luck that, like, all everything falls into place for her to be his victim. He talks a lot about how nothing is predestined and you can always go against fate, but at the moment where fate handed him what he was looking for on a silver platter, he took it. Eventually, um, Raymond revealed himself to Rex, like, towards, like, the beginning of the third act, and actually led him to that rest stop where Saskia disappeared. And Raymond gives Rex an ultimatum. The only way to know what happened to Saskia is for him to drink drugged coffee. He says that it is drugged with sleeping pills. And then exactly what happened to Saskia would go on to happen to Rex. There is not any reason why it would be a good idea to drink the drugged coffee that this criminal mastermind who abducted your girlfriend three years ago is giving you. And at first he does the sensible thing and refuses. He throws a coffee back in Raymond's face and walks away. But then he stops walking away like an idiot. And then he goes to something that they set up um, at the very beginning of the movie when they first got to the rest stop. He and Saskia like um, made like a pact to never abandon each other because dramatic irony and they buried coins at um, this one specific tree at that rest stop. And he digs up the coins and he sees that they're still there. And I thought what was happening was that they only buried one coin. And when he sees that there are two coins, he sees that as a sign that maybe Saskia is still alive because he has no reason to believe that Rex saw them bury those coins there. That's never mentioned in um, Raymond's story. And Raymond is clearly laying out all his cards on the table, or at least that's what he wants us to think. But no, they bury two coins and he finds two coins. And for some reason, that is the catalyst for him to decide to throw caution to the wind and drink the drugged coffee. I think that that had significantly less impact than what I thought happened. So as anybody could have guessed, it doesn't work out. When the um, sleeping pills take effect, he goes to sleep. And when he wakes up, he is in a coffin underground, buried alive, and he dies. When uh, George Slyzer remade this movie in English, the uh, big difference in the ending was that um, the new girlfriend was able to find them and put a stop to it at the last second, and it had a happy ending, and that's apparently what nobody liked about it. I don't think I would have been upset if that happened in this movie, but whatever, I can only speak for me. I just wish that Rex was given more of a reason to do something so unbelievably foolish as drinking that coffee. But even without that, it was still a good ending for the movie. It wasn't a happy ending, but it was a good ending. And that's it for today. I'll see you guys tomorrow.